If you run for any amount of time and you want to be conscious about how much waste you're producing with the number of shoes you have, you realize you're going through shoes like water and throwing at a ton. So you might be wondering yourself, what can I do with these shoes? Can I do anything with these shoes? Well, I'm Jesse Funk and on today's episode of Runner's Side, I'm going to give you three things you can actually do with those old running shoes. You and I both have this problem, right? We, we get a new pair of shoes, we've got this old pair. You can see I've got, you know, my finger coming through these. Um, they've been around the block. They pile up, you don't know what to do with them. This first tip I'm gonna give you, I've actually made a suggestion of this before in my other shoe videos. So if you haven't seen those, hit that button. I guess it's over here, the bottom right hand corner of the video. Subscribe to the channel, stick around with me. I make a lot of suggestions about both shoes and just running in general how to be a great runner. My first tip is simply keep using those shoes that you've had and you, you know, are accumulating in your closet. Now that doesn't mean keep running in them. Once you've hit that three to 500 mile mark, again, I talk about when you need to change your shoes in another video, but once you've hit that time where you need to change them, stop running in them. You don't wanna do that anymore. But even though they're not good for running anymore, they are probably still good to just walk around in. They still got plenty of padding for a lower impact activity like walking, so you can use them for that. I refer to this as booting them down the line. And that's cause there's several steps in the line here, right? So. You have the running shoe, that's the brand new shoe, it's still got all the padding, good to go. Then, once that's you know kind of kaput for running, boot it down the line to walk in. Walk in them, and those will last a considerable amount of time till they've really gotten to the point that they're just flattened. Then you boot them down the line once more, and they become what we affectionately refer to as yard shoes. Uh, but these could be for mowing the lawn doing house projects, anything where you're gonna get dirty, something where you know the quality of the shoe is not as important as it is just having something covering your foot so it doesn't get dirty. But you boot them all the way down the line until they are no longer of use to you, and then you pitch them. Yes, you still end up throwing these out, but you're reducing the number of shoes that are getting thrown in the landfill because instead of buying new shoes for your everyday wear, you're only buying shoes as your running shoes and then booting them down the line for other uses. So you're not you know, creating that extra demand for more pairs to be produced. See what I gotta go through to try to get nice lighting on my face. <laughs> this is why you don't use backlit backgrounds, um, but we'll ignore that for the time being. Um, you can deal with my kind of two-faced shadow thing going on here. Anyway, tips two and three really kind of go together. They have two different objectives and that's why I separate them out. But your thing, what you're doing with your shoes are gonna be very similar to them. And that is between the two, you're gonna be donating them. Donating them to either get reused or to be recycled. Now, number two, recycling. The most famous program here is gonna be Nike's Reuse a Shoe program. And this is one of Nike's many efforts to take all of the things that they produce and help make a more sustainable environment because they know, just like I know, we are producing all of these things and a lot of things get thrown out, especially shoes, just like we talked about in the step one. Um, they can get thrown out, but really you can take that step one instead of throwing it out and send them to Nike for the reuse of shoe program. Now, this doesn't mean they're gonna take your yard shoes and give them to somebody. That's not <laughs> what they're after. What they do is take your shoes, grind them up, and then use those materials for other projects, more like surfaces rather than reusing those for another shoe. The biggest thing here is that you're not going to take that shoe and put it in a landfill. It's gonna get used somewhere else. And worst case scenario, if the material couldn't be used, and again, I don't know this about Nike. This is just uh, us kind of thinking about the situation. Say you send a Nike and they said, you, you sent the terrible shoes. We can't do anything with them. They still end up in the landfill. But if you send them on, they have the opportunity to become something else instead of definitely ending up in the landfill. So donating them to a program is a good option. 
The other option when you're donating your shoes is to find a company, often a not-for-profit, that is going to take those shoes and actually reuse them so that somebody else can put your shoes on and put them to work. You're booting them down the line, but to somebody else that needs the shoes. Now, one of the programs I know about that does this is the Shoe Crew Water Project. So they not only take your shoes and then boot them down the line for you, either donating or selling them for a minimal price, but their larger mission is to take the proceeds from that and to help build sustainable water sources in developing countries. Now, if you're here with me watching this video, most likely, not definitely, but most likely, you're in a country that we have great you know, infrastructure, water systems, we have plumbing, sewage, sanitation, filtration systems, all these kind of things. And it's very easy to take for granted that water is pretty much everywhere. We have access to clean water all the time. And that is not the case in some developing countries. So groups like this, the Shoe Crew Water Project, they help take what would be our waste and then turn it into a larger mission of helping people have access to clean water, both for sanitation purposes, hygiene, and for just plain drinking water. Something very important, and as a runner, I hope you can understand how important water is to all of us, even you know, thinking about just in that small context, not even as a human being, but how important water is just for us to work out. So that is where I like to go is to a you know a company like that that has a larger mission that can do you know multiple things with our old shoes rather than just take them and make them make them into a new surface. Perfectly fine that Nike wants to do that. Um, this is just my personal brand. If you want to check them out, go to shoecrewwater.org and you can learn more about their particular mission. Either way, no matter what you want to do with your shoes, they are your shoes, but since you're here with me, you're obviously looking for something you can do with your old shoes. You've got multiple options, and those are only two of the many options of where you can donate your shoes once you're done with them. So, if you actually want to know more about how we can make a sustainable future through all these things that we create, like plastics that are going to get wasted, I actually interviewed a smart athlete on the Smart Athlete Podcast, Maddie Steer, who is a world champion rower, and she is studying nail plastics and the effects on the environment that those are having, as well as our conversation kind of centers around what can we as individuals do to reduce our waste, reduce our issues that we're creating through all of these products, something at the heart of what I think about on a daily basis pretty much, um, since Solpri is a company Solpri is a company that makes skincare products for athletes, so we have a lot of plastic waste. It's something I, you know, I think about, so I talk to her about. If you want to see my conversation with Maddie, somebody who's in the thick of it, trying to figure out what are the impacts, what can we do, that should be showing up on the screen here shortly. Just click on that. I'll show, I'll show you to part two. In the middle of that video is where we're going to start talking about the plastic. So you'll jump somewhere in the middle. As always, hit that subscribe button. Stick around with me for more videos on running. And I'll see you next time on the next episode of Runner's High.